Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Fakhri Amadin and I'm from the Revere Group. We do events, we do markets, we do linen, and we also do our very tasty bolas. And today, in conjunction with Cook Halal, well, I'll be showing you this very simple, very easy recipe that you can make throughout the whole month of Ramadan. For this scrumptious recipe, you'll need very basic ingredients, most of which you probably have in your homes already. You can either use self-rising flour, but for this recipe, we'll be using some cake flour, as well as some baking powder, eggs, sugar, just to make it sweet, fine cardamom to give it that brilliant Malay flavor, some cooking oil, vanilla essence, currants and orange rinds, which we'll do our varieties with, and then the buttermilk. The buttermilk is very important, and you can either make your own with a mixture of acid and fresh milk, or you can buy them freshly prepared. It can be a bit pricey, so I always prefer the very beautiful fresh milk with some lovely acid from a lemon. Then for our sugar, we'll need some coconut, just to finish it off and finish the entire complement of flavors. A ratio of full flavor, of full ingredients of sugar and half water, and some butter to add to that as well. The first part of the process is the dry ingredients. There's three steps in total. There's the dry ingredients that we'll be adding first, then it's the egg, or it's also known as the wet mixture, and lastly we'll add our buttermilk to combine all those beautiful flavors. I've got a mixing bowl ready here. First thing you need to add is your four cups of flour. You can either sift it, but that will also take some time out of your batter, and it will still come as fluffy as you need it to be. Once you've got your flour set in a, in a large mixing bowl, you add your baking powder. As I mentioned earlier, it's also easy to use self-raising flour, which already has the raising agents in it. So you'll just use four teaspoons of baking powder, and this ensures that the bola becomes perfectly round and beautiful at the same time. Then the magical ingredient. I say magical because it's a spice, but it's also the core flavor of this whole bola. This is what introduction was done by our foremothers, the Cape Malay Society from many years ago, that ensured this bola is what it is today. First thing you add here is two eggs. Make sure that your eggs are room temperature. It's always best when you bake to work with room temperature eggs. They just do so much more magic. You crack your eggs open. The first thing you have to do, technique that I've learned watching lots of cooking shows like Cook Halal, make sure that you put your air at your eggs. Make sure you whisk them nicely, get them nice and fluffy. There we go. Once you've got that set aside, you add three quarter cups of sugar. That's beautiful white sugar. I like to mix these two just to cream it a little. There we go, it's a nice consistency. Once that's done, add your lastly, you add three quarter cups of cooking oil. Traditionally, our foremothers would say fish oil. I'm not sure the exact reason, but it's cooking oil as we know today, sunflower in origin. There we go. That's beautifully creamed. And to that, you just want to add a teaspoon of vanilla essence. And you can also use the cap of the vanilla essence, uh, the jar. There we go. It's beautiful, it's glossy, it's got lots of movement in it, but not too much. You're gonna add the first part of your wet ingredients. I've always loved the smell of vanilla, especially when baking. And even though we use vanilla essence, it's what we remember from our childhood from baking. And I think it also just makes everything taste more amazing, especially when you're baking. Just mix politely. When I say politely, I think we've got, especially when we're in a hurry, we don't forget that we're baking. And the main ingredient always needs to be love. That's how my mom's always taught us to bake and cook. So set that aside. And then you want to use approximately four cups of milk. I've been doing this for a long time, so I can gauge as well. So the buttermilk is very, very important. This makes a big difference in terms of your baking process, but also helps your batter glue so that it all sticks together nicely. There we go. 
there we go. And a beautiful batter. Color slightly off-white. Beautiful cream vanilla cake sponge. You could add a little more. I'm just gonna add a little more so they don't seem too arrogant. And also it gives you a beautiful creamy texture as well. The buttermilk also adds a slight bit of tart into this very perfect vanilla ball of sponge. I'm very happy with this right now. Now that you've got your perfect batter, you're almost there. And this is a very quick process. And obviously be very careful when you're working with hot oil. Make sure that the handles are always out of the way. The first thing you need to do, and this is a tip, I think everybody has their own process. Some people use hot water. I like to use the oil because it's here already. You just heat the spoon just so that the batter can glide off into the oil. Another process to make them nice and round, make sure that you spoon it against the side of the bowl. You get it in and you perfectly clear that in. Test the oil, it must bounce back immediately and it must start frying and taking shape almost immediately you know the oil is ready. A lot of people think I use a um, ice cream spoon. I don't know how that's possible. I think it would be a very complex process. And you also want to make sure that you put just enough in to allow them to breathe. So that they can turn themselves, they can get cooked evenly right around. A very nice variant while that is frying as well. Let me just get this bowl here as well. You can add lots of this. If you really want to make it decadent, you can add some saffron. Saffron is very expensive. Not everybody can afford that. Let's just mix some of this batter out here. I really like making these because it's so much fun and it brings so much people joy. On a Sunday morning, we've got kids coming in here. You can just add some currants. The kids, families that have been coming here for years. And it's always, it always gives me great joy when people talk about the bullas as if they're not even a part of me. So then you've got some currants in there. These are ready to come out now. They're nice and golden brown. It's always nice because it's fried, strain them just a little bit, it'll give them some time just to get off the heat. They're nice and golden brown. Mm, this is really good actually. And it's really, we'll just let that cool a bit and some of the cook and drain. When you add the currants, try and get as much of the currants as you can inside of the actual batter. What happens with the ones on the exterior, they fry really crispy and it's not really nice to eat. Some people use raisins as well, but it's very small. Remember, this is just about the size of a golf ball, a little bigger, so you can't really have too many raisins in there. The fruit really doesn't lend um, a brilliant flavor when it's overpowering in a cake. There is also a different current bola recipe, which includes yeast. I'm not too fond of the yeast recipes, um, but these ones come out quite nicely. And it's the same batter. You can add the orange too, you can add the saffron too as well and it will always give you a nice vanilla sponge and just that extra bit of fruitiness really adds great. We can now double check these, they look like they're ready. As I was mentioned earlier, when you do the current, try not get them on the outside like this, but if you can, they very easily pick off. They're crispy, they're not so nice to eat and you can just discard of that. Now you've got the batters ready, your bolas are ready, you can continue frying. One batch makes between 40 and 60, depending on how small or big you're making them. And then we're going to start sugaring. Now the sugaring process, traditionally, it's very simple. Make sure you have the exact ratio, full sugar, half water. So if you're using one cup, one full cup of sugar, and a half a cup of water. You could measure it to be pedantic, but also just roughly adds just as great flavor. Make sure that whatever you do, irrespective of how many you need to do, you've always got the ratio right. The ratio is the most important thing. If you add too much sugar, it will definitely turn into toffee apple syrup. If you add too little, it will become too watery and will absorb. And then we'll just add a little butter now. Not too much also, it's already been fried in oil, you don't want too much. Just add a little bit. I think the bit of fat also helps maintain the syrup so that it remains the consistency that you require it to be. Now we can give it a bit of stir, and that's fine as is. Let it cook, and this is another neat trick. Turn the heat off. So while the sugar is becoming a syrup, it remains a syrup because you're not adding more heat. Remember molecularly, the heat breaks down the sugar and the water, so it'll make it into a toffee apple if you let it cook because you're losing more of the moisture. Make sure that you coat. You, don't, you want to depot, 
but you don't want it too deep and you also don't want it too shallow. Don't be stingy with the sugar, you can always keep it for later. Add a few, make sure you have enough room. Make sure that you've got enough room there so that you can turn it around and you can get all sides around. Oh, that's so beautiful. Nice and glossy, just coat it. You don't want too much. And a little bit of coconut to the base of the bowl. It's actually my aunt's bowl, but I'll return it to her after Ramadan. But I like using it to sugar my butter. Nice and warm. Oh, beautiful. There we go. Everything's been beautifully coated. That's our first batch. And I've also got the orange here. So now I can see, remember it maintains the heat for a long time. So you don't need to put this heat on and off all the time. And the rest can always be put in a container and put in the fridge for the rest of the evening. These ones are the orange ones that I've made earlier. And now I'm going to sugar the last, the current ones. And another one for good luck. Remember, we just want it coated. Syrup is still warm. I've now added the heat on again, just to make it a little warmer. You can see the currants. They are the easiest to identify. I think the kids also had one of the kids going, there's flies in the bullers. It's not flies, it's currants. Derived from crepes. And as simple as that, from one batch, you've got three varieties of bolas. These can be frozen. You can keep them for the whole month of Ramadan. You can make a few batches before, freeze them, put them in bags of requirement amounts that you need. So if you're going to need 10 every night, put them in bags of 10, unfreeze it the night before, or take it out in the afternoon after Asr. Go and make your namaz, go and make dhikr. Come back, sugar your bolas, and serve your family for iftar. And that's it. How to make an amazing bola. I hope me, Fakhri Ahmadin from Revere Events, Linen and Markets, I've shown you and made it simple for you. Check out this amazing recipe on cookhalal.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Ramadan Kareem to all.